Hi everyone, this is Mindy for Lawn Fawn and in today's video I wanted to show you how you can get more use out of your hot foil plates. Now I know hot foiling system can be a big investment and I want to show you how you can still use these hot foil plates to create some amazing backgrounds. So today I'm going to show you how you can emboss with it and also create a faux letterpress look. The plate that I'm going to be using for today in my examples is the Snowflake background hot foil plate, but you can use this technique with any of the hot foiling plates. I'm also going to be using a variety of cardstock today, including chili pepper, moonstone, and noble fur. I did have a piece of white here, but I didn't end up using it. These pieces are all cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And the first thing I'm going to do is take that piece of moonstone cardstock, line it up with my hot foil plate, and then hold it together with some post-it tape, creating a hinge at the top. This first card I'm going to show you is going to be just a very basic way to use the hot foil plate. So we're going to emboss this design onto the cardstock. I'm also going to be using my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine. And these are the regular or the standard cutting plates, not the extended ones that Spellbinders has recently come out with. So the sandwich I'm going to use to do this is first I have my platform. So this is your main piece, the bottom. Then I have a folded piece of cardstock. So this was a regular sheet, eight and a half by 11 that I folded in half. That's going to be a shim that I'm placing down. Most machines come with a tan embossing mat. Mine is gray because it came with the extended one. I couldn't find my tan one, but it is a flexible mat. So I'm gonna place that on top of my cardstock shim. Now this sandwich I learned from Jennifer McGuire. You can also take a look at the platform and see how they do a sandwich. You can try that too, but this one works really well. Next, I'm going to take my hot foil plate and that cardstock, and I am going to flip this so that the cardstock is touching that embossing mat. I'll explain why the hinge is important later on. So I'm going to place this down, but I like to kind of tilt mine on my mat so that the harsh edge of the plate is not going full force against the machine. So I tilt mine a little bit. Then I'm going to place my clear cutting plate on top. And then I'm going to turn the handle and run this through. Now, if you find you have cracks in your cardstock, you could miss this with some water before running it through. So after I ran the plates through and I pull back my cardstock, you can see we have this amazing embossed design and you can use either side of the cardstock. So this is the side where it's kind of pushed in to the cardstock, but if you flip it over, it's like an embossing folder. And I'm going to show you two ways to do something with this. I'm just going to carefully peel off that post-it tape. I'm going to continue reusing it for the rest of my sandwiches. And now I'm going to show you a way to step this up a little bit. So for this next example, I am using my chili pepper cardstock cut to four and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm going to create that hinge at the top. Now this is where that hinge comes in really handy. I'm going to flip this open and I'm going to take cranberry ink. Now I opened up that hinge so that my cardstock is on the other side and I'm taking my ink pad and just in some small circular motions, I'm going to apply ink to my hot foil plate just making sure that it is all covered. Now I'm leaving that same sandwich in there. I have my cardstock I placed on top of that embossing mat, and I'm just going to gently close that hinge and let that drop down onto the cardstock. Then I can bring in my clear plate, place that on top, and run this through the die cut machine once again. So it's going to apply pressure, take that ink, and push it into the cardstock. So now when I remove this, we have this beautiful faux letterpress look, and I love that ink on top of the chili pepper cardstock. I think this might be one of my favorite backgrounds, but it's really hard to pick. So I'm going to repeat this with my Moonstone cardstock, except this time I'm going to use Blue Jay ink. Now, a couple things I wanted to talk about while I'm showing you this process once again is that first, when it comes to cleaning your hot foil plate, I tried cleaning it with a rag, but I think the easiest way to do this is to take your hot foil plate and just rinse it off in the sink. And then all I did was I flipped it down and kind of pushed my hot foil plate into my towel to pick up any excess ink. And that seemed to clean it off really well. So this is where I'm just letting that plate drop down onto the cardstock. That is where that hinge plays such a huge part is you don't want your plate to shift on top of your mat. 
And now we have another beautiful tone on tone. So not only can you get great oiling results, but you can pretty much kind of emboss or even stamp with this. The next card example I have is going to be using Noble Fur cardstock. And for this one, I thought I would try out the Yeti ink. So this is a pigment ink. And this one, I'm going to kind of dab because of the way the pad is, I didn't want the edges of the foil plate to catch that pad. I kind of did a little dabbing and just barely going across it, rubbing it a little bit to apply that ink to the hot foil plate. So then when I run this one through, this is another one that creates a very beautiful design and kind of that subtle snowflake look in the background. And just think what you could do if you applied embossing ink and did some heat embossing with this. Now here's a look at all four or five of the backgrounds that I did. I did two of those blue ones, but these would make great scenes. Now I'm going to make some really simple cards and I'm just going to kind of briefly go through what I did to create the cards. I really wanted to focus on the technique, but just think of the different scenes that you could create, whether it's adding the cute little mice having a snowball fight, or if you added some mountains to the background and some stitched hillside. I mean, there's so many possibilities with this. And of course, don't forget, you can ink blend over the top because that ink is really pushed into the cardstock. I just went around the edges with some Blue J ink and I applied it a little bit heavier to the very outer edges, keeping that center kind of that light blue cardstock. So another beautiful look. Now this one, I flipped that cardstock over. So this is the part that's raised up and I'm holding my blending brush by the handle and applying this ink very, very lightly. Most of the ink is going to catch those raised areas. You may have some where it gets onto the bottom portion of the cardstock, but for the most part, your darkest colors are going to be on the snowflake. Now I couldn't help myself. I still went around the outer edges just to kind of add contrast and really draw the attention into the center of the card. Either way, they look amazing. I did try and take some Yeti pigment ink and go over it with the blending brush, but because I already had blue down, it really didn't make a difference. I think if you had a fresh piece of cardstock with that embossed design, the Yeti ink blended over would look amazing too. To finish off one of these cards, I am going to be using the giant outlined Oh What Fun die, and I'm going to add some liquid glue behind that and attach it to the front of the cardstock. I just did this out of white cardstock. A couple things I thought about afterwards is I probably would have layered this a couple more times of that Oh What Fun die. The more um, you have stacked, I think, the better it separates it from the background and or I probably could have put maybe light blue cardstock inside of those letters to really make it stand out. Because our background is kind of textured, I had to place something heavy on it and let it sit for a minute or two, and then I called that one good. For the other blue background, I took these couple snowflakes that are from the Snow Flurries backdrop. I die cut once out of white cardstock and once out of some silver metallic cardstock and layered those together placing those on top of that background. And once again, placing something heavy on it, it could be your Misty, it could be your phone, a book, or even just some acrylic blocks and let those really sit. So they adhere really well to that background. Now I'm going to set this off on the side and finish it with a sentiment later on in the video. I wanted to keep going and get my backgrounds done. For my red background, I took that snow flurries backdrop, added that snowflake border, and then one of the snowflakes and placed that in the center. And then for the green background, I'm going to use the deck the car. I thought this was a super cute set to put as a focal point on the front of the car. And I'm going to die cut kind of those whole areas of the dies using the double sided adhesive sheets. I have a piece of white card stock that I'm going to add a piece of that double sided adhesive sheet to and then die cut it out with those full pieces. So that way I can add everything on top and it'll get stuck together right away. I sped up the assembly on these a little bit because it is a little bit time consuming and can take me a little while. A couple things I wanted to mention and point out. So my tree, I use the textured cardstock quite a bit for my car and my tree in the present. And one suggestion I have is that before you take the adhesive off of your piece is put a little piece of post-it note tape or anything sticky like that, any type of tape, washi tape, and actually adhere the piece down to your work surface before removing that double-sided adhesive sheet. That way it'll hold it in place when you try to place it down and it's just a lot easier to work with. Once I have everything assembled, I ended up just deciding to use the car and the Christmas tree on top of the car, and I'm gonna save the present for a different card in the future. 
Now, I think this car looks super cute on that green cardstock with the white kind of pressed into it. So to help kind of draw the attention and just add a little more interest to the front of the card, I took the stitched scalloped rectangle frame, die cut that from white cardstock, and I'm adding some foam strips behind that to pop that up. Then I'll remove the backing and using my tweezers, I can apply this to the front of my card. I'm also going to add foam squares behind my car and place that in the center of my card front. And then also add a couple strips of foam squares to the top of my tree too. Now the rest of the cards, like I said before with the sentiments, I just did that all off screen. So this first one is the Oh What Fun, the giant outlined Oh What Fun die. And we have that kind of stamped into the background, ink blended on the side. This one now, so the sentiment I'm using is from Winter uh, Winter Wavy Sayings, die cut from the Simple Wavy Banner. And I popped that up and then just added a few embellishments into the center of the snowflake and around the edge. I really love this tone on tone and that bright white on the red cardstock. This next one is the one where I used the other side. So kind of like an embossing folder look. And I have those silver metallic snowflakes on there. Once again, I added some gems to the center and also used that winter wavy sayings sentiment set. And then my last card has these snowflakes that are pretty much kind of stamped in there or embossed in there with the Yeti pigment ink. I did add some of the clear glaze on top just to give that tree a little shine. Okay, so that is my technique for you today using that hot foil plates. Now, if you have a hot foiling system, hopefully this is giving you ideas to use it even more. And if you don't have a hot foil system, this gives you ideas to be able to use this background. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for joining me today. See you soon.